I'm making this video because I want to explain why my publishing has been a little erratic for the past summer and why it might become more erratic in the very near future. See, the thing is, right now, there is a very big forest fire right near where I live. And we're going to get to that in just a minute. First, I want to give a little backstory. In the beginning of June, we had a heat wave. We had 50 degree temperatures, at least that was according to my car's dash, which you see here. And according to our pool's thermometer, it was off the charts. It couldn't even register that high of a temperature in the thermometer, which means it was so hot that it was the perfect time to try to fry an egg on the driveway, which we did. Here's the result of frying the egg on the driveway. We moved it to the rocks later on because it looked pretty ghetto having a frying pan with an egg on the driveway. But we moved it to the rocks later and it didn't go quite as fast as I thought it would. It took about 20 minutes for the egg to fry, but it's still fried. It was hot enough to fry an egg, but you wouldn't want to eat it. It was, it was really weird. It was like crusty and at the same time jelly and I, I don't know. Anyway, nobody ate the egg, but the point is it was hot enough to fry an egg outside in June. And then shortly after that, this happened. This is taken from my patio where me and my wife are sitting after the kids are in bed watching this forest fire burn up a hill right across the lake from our house. And then two days later, this happened. And we took the kids to watch this one. We could watch the, the airplanes drop water on it, helicopters drop water on it. Weren't big planes, but still dropping water from the air is pretty cool. So we got to watch that with the kiddos. And then the next day, this is from our house patio again. These water skimmers fill their pontoons with water and then drop them on fires. And these guys were fighting the same fire that you just saw on the hillside the next day. And we could watch this from our patio. And it's super entertaining with the kids to watch this kind of stuff. But then when it gets too close to your house, you're kind of less entertained and more concerned having a family with, with young kids. Uh, but what's hilarious is you can see in the background the burned down fire from two days before. I guess that's not hilarious, but it's just a funny coincidence because there's the black background right there. Anyway, they had six of these planes that kept circling and they kept getting water from the lake and they kept going over the fires to dump them on the fires. And of course, the people on the lake with their boats were too close to the planes and the planes couldn't get the water because the boats were in the way. And so then the police had to come out. They just shut down all water activities on the boat aside from water bombers and helicopters with buckets. And that was the first part of our summer. I'm not sure if you knew this, but I spend pretty much all my time with the family because uh, they're young. I, I decided years and years ago that when my kids are young, I want to spend as much time with them as I can. And when they're off in elementary school, which one of them is, one is starting kindergarten in September, and one of them is only three years old, so she's still home. But I want to spend as much time as I can with them while they're young, and then I can always work more when they're older. I like to work, I want to work more, but I also don't want to miss their childhood when they're at home with us. So until they're all elementary school, I spend a lot of time with our kids. And here's a picture of all of us earlier in the summer. There's my wife in the middle and our three beautiful children. And of course, there's me on the right with my Canucks hat. And these forest fires keep popping up around where we live. But after the one I just showed you where there's the big smoke puff on the hillside, we had a bit of a break. There wasn't a fire for a while, but we had lots and lots of smoke. Smoke so bad that it's recommended you don't go outside. And it's really hard to be cooped up inside with three young children. You can't go outside and exercise because the smoke is basically like you're smoking cigarettes when you go outside. And you also can't go places because you don't really want to catch COVID. So it's um, kind of a catch-22 here between a rock and a hard place. So we've become very creative with entertaining our kids at home, inside. And whenever there's a good day, like this morning, it was a good day. And it was actually still, the air quality was still uh, over 100. Um, you want to be below 50. Below 50 is healthy. It was still over 100, which means you shouldn't be exercising outside. But it was the best day we've had in a long time. So we went outside immediately. We went to a playground. And then this evening, just before I started recording this video, our air quality was 407 on a scale of 500. The most polluted cities in the world have air qualities that are better than this. I went outside just to see what a 407 was like. And... It, the stuff's flying in your face. Like you can feel the little specks and stuff flying in your face. 
you can, um, it's, it's like when you're at a campfire and the fire is blowing in your face and you get the smoke right in your face. That's what it's like, but it's everywhere. It's all over our town. The reason is there's a really big fire that looks like this some nights. If it's windy, this is how the fire looks. And if it's not windy, it's not so bad. In the past few weeks, it's not been so bad. But on this night where it looks pretty bad, our entire city was on evacuation alert because it was really windy and the hot embers fly kilometers and kilometers. And so this fire is right across the lake from our city. And if our city caught on fire, the entire thing would be evacuated. The entire thing was an evacuation alert, which means you have as little as five minutes notice between when the cops come to your house and when you have to leave. And you don't really have to leave, you can stay, but they don't want you to because they lay fire lines everywhere and they, they fireproof your neighborhoods. You can't drive over a fire hose because it pops the fire hose. So they want people to leave so they can properly fight fires and try to save your neighborhood and save your city. And the city where we live, is over 50,000 people. It's not like a small village. It's, that's a lot of people to evacuate. And around us, a lot of the highways are closed because of fires. Like it, it, the entire British Columbia where I live is burning down. It's absolutely bonkers. And here's a photo of our kids, just to change subject a little bit and something a little more happier. Here's a photo of our three kids delivering dog food and cat food to a local charity who is collecting food for animals who've been displaced by evacuations. Because we're not the first city to be affected by this. There's entire cities that have burned down. Not cities. There's entire villages that have burned down. No cities yet. Ours might be the first. We'll see. And the crazy thing is this morning on our morning walk with the dog, this is our three kids. And it was actually quite nice. The air quality was still so bad as recommended you don't go outside, but we can't stay cooped up forever. We got to take certain risks with our health. Anyway, so we went outside for a walk. We walked the dog. Uh, there's The dog's not in this picture, but this is our dog right here. Her name is Layla and we walked the dog. And so that was this morning. And this evening, it's at 4.07, the air quality. And the neighboring town, which is about 15 minutes drive from, from our place, from our, from our city, it, it's a city of maybe 5,000 people. It's not that big. Um, they're on evacuation alert. The entire area surrounding that village is on evacuation alert. And it could very well be that ours will be an evacuation alert next. It might be right now. I haven't checked the news. Uh, but my point is that if you don't hear from me in the near future, if you don't see my videos popping up in your feed, it's likely because we've been evacuated from our house. And uh, currently I'm recording on a desktop computer. My laptop burned out years ago and I gave it to my wife because it was old. Uh, so I got a newer one for myself to make these videos and it's a desktop. So I'm not gonna be recording on this outside of the house. And so, yeah, if you don't hear from me, this is what it is. And I know the situation isn't that bad. I mean, there's a lot worse situations in the world right now, but I just want to share what our situation is and that's what it is. So hopefully we don't get evacuated. We were on evacuation alert last week. That was rescinded once the winds died down. Tonight, the winds are crazy again and the fire's closer than it was last week because it just keeps burning. Even when the winds die down, the fire just keeps going. And this is one of the biggest fires, maybe I think the second biggest fire in British Columbia. It is the one that has the most firefighters, the most equipment, the most airplanes, the most helicopters on it because it's, it's affecting the most population. And so hopefully when the winds die down, which hopefully they do tonight, everything will be back to normal, not normal, but uh, back to not threat of evacuations tomorrow. And then things are gone as normal, I hope. Uh, but if they don't and you don't hear from me, you don't see my videos, now you know why. So if you're near forest fires or near COVID hotspot or near something that's not good for you, stay safe and hopefully I'll be publishing videos on schedule in the very near future.